Today we celebrate the Reformation, so happy Reformation Day to all of you. And I want to start this morning by asking you, do you know what the Boy Scouts motto is? Two words, it's be prepared. Right, we have a Boy Scout troop that meets here. Some of you yourselves were Boy Scouts, and their motto is to be prepared. It was once said that there was a man who asked a, maybe a pretty obvious question to one of the, the scout leaders when he said, be prepared, prepared for what? And Robert baden Bow, the founder of scouting, answered, why be prepared for any old thing? Good advice, of course. We are to be prepared for anything and everything. Nevertheless, no one, I don't believe, could be prepared for one of the biggest controversies and consequences this world has ever seen, the grave consequence of humanity's fall into sin. And equally as unexpected, no one could possibly expect how the Lord, how our God would overcome all of those consequences. We don't expect the way that God did it. The seed of a woman would crush the head of the serpent while himself being fa uh, faith fatally bruised. Who would have foreseen that? That God would kill the firstborn of Egypt and then take the Red Sea and part it in two for the Israelites to walk on dry grounds? Never saw that coming. That one prophet would see the little town of Bethlehem to produce a savior. That another would see him wounded for our transgressions like a lamb led to the slaughter. And finally, there would be a guy crying from the wilderness, wearing camel's hair and eating locust, and would tell us all that we need to be Prepared? Who would have ever wrote that story? But who could be prepared for any of that? We are totally unexpected. And that's why so many people in the Bible and in the world in Luther's time and even today miss God's plan of salvation in Jesus, the Messiah. Salvation's history is a repeat foreshadowing, a repeat point forward to the one that no one could have expected, that no one planned for. So maybe it shouldn't be a surprise that the history of Luther and the Reformation, that our own history was itself a surprise. It was the God-gifted rediscovery of the unexpected, impossible to prepare for gospel, and the securing of our redemption through the Son of God, Mary's Son, through the scandal of the cross. But it is surprising. The Reformation shocked the world. And yet, unexpected as it was, the Reformation really gave us nothing new. It was just a rediscovery of the Messiah, that all too often we as a people miss. So we are to be prepared. But time and time again, we are surprised at what God has done for us. It is, be, is it because God does sly things, and he works behind closed doors, and he does things that might create a shock value? No, I don't think so. Is it because God is like a well-written mystery that makes us go through every twist and turn and make us wonder and fear until the reveal is finally given at the end? No, I don't think that's why. And I'll talk more about that in a few moments. But why is it that when we look at what God has done, it comes to us as a surprise, as something unexpected? I think. It's because we don't really recognize God and who he is and what he's done. Think about it. The Old Testament 
We have Israel and the Jews in Jesus' own day refusing to believe God's plan as the way it was. We have the Israelites in the wilderness who say, I detest this miserable food. Even though God promised to provide for them time and time again to lead them to a land filled with milk and honey. We have the Pharisees in Jesus' time who didn't believe John the Baptist when they said, we will not accept the strange Baptist message. Even though John was foretold in the Bible well before, and the Pharisees knew the Bible oh so well. The people turned against Jesus, and they said, there's no way that this man could be the Christ. Time and time again, the world of God in the Bible couldn't recognize when God was at work. The refusing to believe world, the refusing to believe nature in us all want to call the shots. As the gospel lesson said, wants to tell Jesus and John when to dance and when to mourn, when to bless and when to curse. This was Luther's hopeless situation as a trying-to-earn-God's-favor kind of a monk that he was in his early days. The people of Luther's time questioned the same thing. Is this really the way that God wants to save us? There is, it's unexpected. The people of Luther's time said God's way of salvation couldn't be for us only to believe in Him and to believe that Jesus has done everything for us. Surely, we have to earn our way to heaven in some way. That's what we expect. That's what we think should happen. That is the God that we are prepared for. This is true for us as well. Still today, we look around the world, we look at our churches, we look at our own lives. We don't recognize always when God is working for us. We don't recognize when He is at work. We live in a world that has turned its back on the law of God. And even some Christians question if we really need to follow every single law that God has given to us. Do we really need to live in the way that God describes in His Bible? Maybe these are old, archaic rules. Now things have evolved. Things are different today. We doubt that the bread and the wine can save. That the water in the dish can save. That everything that we have done to turn away from God can be completely erased and forgotten and forgiven. Sure, we do them. We go to the altar. We go to the font. We confess our sins. But do we truly put full reliance on these ways of saving us? Do we live our life the rest of the week as if these things that we see in the front of the sanctuary are the most important things that God has ever given to us to save us? I think we struggle to put our full reliance on God and the means to which He saves. I think we might see them as unexpected. Like the Bible characters of old who saw God do amazing things through impossible means. God saved us by splitting the water into two. God saved us by putting the mouths of the lions closed when David, Daniel was in the den. God saved us by being born a baby in Bethlehem. What good comes from Bethlehem? God saved me by dying. God saves me with water and bread and wine. God really wants me here, right now, being different than anyone else that's around me. God expects me to be unique. God will accomplish His work through me it seems unexpected, but why? 
Yet God's salvific mission is fulfilled in spite of the world's missing him by refusing to believe. In spite of our old nature refusal to see God in the way that he comes to us. It shouldn't be unexpected. It should be obvious. It should be expected. It should be celebrated. It should give us confidence. It should give us strength. God has, from the very words that he's spoken, been very clear of who he is and what he wants to do for us and just how much he loves us. That's why the Reformation is not new. It's just Luther and others realizing what was right in front of them the whole time and that they missed it. Just like the disciples were looking at Jesus the whole time and they realized when he rose that he was there the whole time and that they missed it. Just like the Israelites, as they saw God, even though they complained, realized that God was right in front of them and he was doing exactly what he promised to do and they missed it. Just like you all need to realize what's right in front of you. That God is doing exactly what He promised to do through you. And that sometimes we miss it. Good way. Sure, it was undeserved, but Christ saved us anyway. The Reformation was all about reminding the world of the saving nature of Jesus. That he would pay for all our sins on Calvary's cross. That we are forgiven. Amazing? Yes. Unexpected? Well, it shouldn't be. That is who God has been. That is who God is now. And that is who God will be forever. We are thankful that God has revealed us in oh so many ways. And we ask his blessing upon us as he continues to work in us every single day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.